thank you for tuning in to this third episode of Impact Etching University. Today we'll talk about a most interesting and confusing topic, namely DPIs, image size and image resolution. I've been working with uh, my customers using our engraving machines for more than 10 years, and I can say that absolute majority of customers do not understand how to correctly use DPIs in conjunction with our engraving machines, how to convert dimensions to pixel sizes to resolutions, it all creates a lot of confusion. So uh, if there's one thing that I want you to carry from this video is that in general DPI is not a good measure of image quality or image size. So let's just uh, try to play different scenarios and understand what is DPI, how to use it. Uh, DPI obviously stands for dot per inch. It is a term uh, that comes out of the world of uh, raster images, uh, kind of coming back to the topic of one of our previous videos. DPI only makes sense for, for raster images, where it, D, D means dots and DPI in, uh, overall means dots per inch. Dots, in this particular case, is synonymous with pixels. Um, DPI is kind of measure of linear dot density. That means per linear inch of your image, this particular device creates or scans or shows uh, this many pixels. If DPI is, for example, 100, that means that per linear inch of your, for example, stone, the engraving machine will create 100 dots. Uh, note, notice how I've used uh, the, the term device when explaining DPI. The thing is, DPI usually works within the context of certain device. For example, when I say that uh, the typical impact engraving machine cre uh, creates the optimal images at approximately 100 dots per inch engraving resolution. That means that per inch of uh, surface of the stone, it will create 100 hits. When we say uh, that, for example, you scan your uh, photograph with a resolution of 600 dpi's, that means for one inch of linear uh, dimension of your photograph, uh, you will create uh, 600 pixels. You should understand that dpi is a linear measure. Dots per inch means dots per linear inch, not, not dots per square inch. The implication of this is, for example, as follows. If you engrave a certain image with the engraving resolution of 100 dpi's, and let's just say this image will be one inch by one inch in dimensions, the engraving machine will create 100 dots in each of those two dimensions Therefore, the total number of dots in that one by one inch image will be 100 times 100 equals 1000. That means the engraving machine to engrave the uh, one by one inch area of the stone will have to hit the stone 1000 times. Uh, now, why is DPI in general not a good measure of image size or quality? Uh, the best measure of image size of quality is really the dimensions of image in pixels. Because the more pixels, the better resolution of the image, the more visual information the image con contains. If you ever seen those highly pixelated portraits on the internet and quite often maybe sent to you by customers, they are pixelated because there's just not enough pixels in them. When you zoom in, you see those pixels. And those portraits can be like in the in the range of I don't know 100 by 100 pixels or 100 by 200. Basically, the fewer pixels are there in the image, the less visual information there is, and more pixelated and worse quality-wise image looks looks. Uh, with DPI's, the problem is DPI is just number of pixels per inch. It doesn't tell you exact number of pixels unless you also provide the dimensions in inches. For example, uh, you tell me that you scan the photograph at 600 dpi resolution. What kind of information it gives me? Pretty much nothing, because I don't know how big the photograph was. 
if, if you scan like small passport size photograph, which was say one inch by one inch in dimensions, and you scan it with 600 in DPIs, what you'll get is basically 600 DPIs multiplying by one inch in each dimension, you get the photograph that has 600 pixels, both height-wise and width-wise, which is usually not enough. I mean, it's really not such a good quality of image in terms of dimension. If you now say that you scanned the photograph that is 10 by 10 inches with 600 DPIs, now that gives me another understanding because I now multiply DPIs by the size in inches and your photograph will be 6 sorry 1000 by uh, sorry 6000 by 6000 uh, uh, pixels in uh, each dimension so 6000 by 6000 pixels in each dimension that's really good that means uh, it's a good quality I mean it's a lot of pixels it's something to work with and you can easily edit it and uh, modify it to prepare it for engraving for example so my point is if to understand the quality the dimensions of image you need to provide both DPIs as well as the dimensions of image in inches why not skip to the more universal measure of image size and quality and just operate in pixels by the way, as we talk about um, the dimensions of image in pixels, I want you to understand that dimensions of image in pixels has absolutely nothing to do with dimensions of file. The same image, as it was illustrated in um, one of the previous videos in this series, when it's saved in different format, can have radically different size in kilobytes or megabytes. Uh, the best, as I said, the best way of figuring out the quality of your image is look at its dimensions and pixels. And to do that, you go into your file explorer in Windows, you right click, choose uh, our properties, and in a separate tab, I think it's uh, properties or information, there will be our more, there will be just a couple of fields telling you dimensions of image in pixels. Um, okay, let's play a little bit with uh, the concept and try to now translate DPIs and inches into pixels. Let's play this scenario. So say you are about to engrave a portrait on stone and the area on stone that you have for that portrait is 8 inches high and 5 inches wide. What is the optimal size of image in pixels? that you need to create or obtain or scan for that engraving to look good. So again, 8 inches by 5 inches and we know that a typical engraving machine engraves with resolution of about 100, 100 dpi's. It might be less, it might be more, but the impact engraver uh, produces best results when engraving at 100 dpi's because it hits the stone physically with sharp diamond. The cavities created by hitting the stones are pretty big. I mean, if you start putting them closer to each other than hundreds per inch of surface, you will kind of wash out the engraving. That's the quality of uh, diamond engraving that it's deep. And because it's deep, it needs to be slightly lower resolution than, for example, laser engraving. So again, let's start with our uh, input parameters, we engrave at 100 dpi's and the area on the stone that we have to engrave with is 8 inches high, 5 inches wide. How to figure out the optimal size of pixels? Very simple. You multiply both dimensions by engraving resolution, in which case it will be 8 times 100, 800 pixels, and 5 times 100, 500 pixels. So for your engraving that will be on the stone 8 inches high by 5 inches wide with 100 dpi's, it's absolutely sufficient to have a file in pixels that is 800 by 500 pixels. Everything above that will mean that the program will scale it down. Everything above that basically is redundant visual information. Everything below that means that the program will have to uh, increase the size of your image at the expense of its quality. What quite often happens is that my clients prepare the images in Photoshop, for example, and they specify dimensions in Photoshop, and they specify 
the resolution that completely out of whack and does not match the resolution you engrave in the typical engraving machine. For example, you know that your engraving on stone will be either 10 by 10 inches, but from some reason when you start designing it in Photoshop, you design it at 300 dpi's. So you end up creating a file that is three times bigger in each of the dimensions. So basically, if, if instead of specifying 100 dpi's in Photoshop, you specify 300 dpi's in Photoshop, then you'll get a file which is 3000 pixels by 3000 pixels. Whereas 1000 by 1000 is enough in this particular case. So you end up feeding into the machine the file that is not three, but nine times bigger because it's a quadratic dependence, right? You make it three times too big in each dimension, it is nine times too big in terms of pixel count. And then uh, customers try to load it into engraver and sometimes the, uh, the program runs out of memory. So do not uh, try to understand basically that uh, whenever, if you want to create it in Photoshop and you specify the dimensions, choose the DPIs that are close to or slightly above what you engrave with, but don't do like extremely high DPIs, I mean, just not required. Okay, to um, summarize, I'm not sure if I confused you more about DPIs or not, to summarize, DPI is really a bad measure to judge, to measure the quality of image, because DPI in itself does not tell you about the number of pixels in the image, which is really the biggest contributor to how much visual information is there in the, in the picture, is there in the image. As I said, DPIs by itself do not give you full picture of number of pixels because you also need dimensions. DPIs is just the density of pixels. In order to get total number of pixels, you need the dimensions that you work with. So whenever possible, try to avoid using DPIs and just always check the universal measure of your image quality and size, the count of pixels count of pixels in terms of height and count of pixels in terms of width. All right, I, I'm a little bit stressed about this video because DPIs, despite being very simple concept, it still confuses a lot of people. I would really like to know if I made it clearer or I confused you even more. So please comment uh, behind this video and subscribe to our channel so that you'll be notified of all of the future updates. That is, if you watch this on YouTube, subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you watch this on Facebook, like our page. I'm Andrei Larionov, Director of Economical Solutions. Uh, thank you for watching and see you in the next episode.